Hello everyone, my name is Christopher Hernandez. I'm an emergency management specialist here at Snohomish Health District. With summer upon us, it's a great time to talk about air quality and wildfire smoke. 2017 and 2018 were a little hazardous in terms of wildfire smoke and air quality. So we got the chance to sit down with our friend Phil from the Puget Sound Clean Air Agency to give us some more insight and some more information about uh, this upcoming wildfire season. As we expect things to uh, dry out, um, we're gonna, the risk of wildfires is going to increase. And that's actually what we're expecting for the future, for the long term. So we're gonna see more and more of these wildfires. Our summers are gonna look more and more like it. It's tough to say exactly what it's gonna be like. Uh, we're thinking our chances are above normal uh, this summer for it being dry and having more fires. We're hoping 2018 was really just a, just a, a once in a 50 year kind of year, but, but we'll see. So odds are we're gonna see some more smoke. Um, hoping it's not going to be as bad as 2018. In uh, Snohomish County, we have monitors in three different locations. We have one in Linwood, we have one in Marysville, and we also have one in Darrington. These monitors are running continuously and they're measuring fine particulate matter levels in the air every day, all day long. These are really, really tiny um, bits of dust or smoke. They're so small you can't see them individually, but they actually have a really big impact on our health. Uh, fine particulate matter can do lots of things, all the way from causing irritation, um, runny nose, um, you know, irritated eyes, all the way through actually really quite serious cardiovascular problems, including risk of heart attack, risk of stroke, risk of long-term cardiovascular disease. And so it's really important that we know what these are. Most of the time, we're in an air quality index of good, which has a color green associated, associated with it. Uh, other times, we're up into the moderate. That happens a bit. Um, that's not at a level where we need to worry about um, changing what we're doing. Um, but then, too often for us, uh, it gets up into the unhealthy for sensitive groups or unhealthy. And that's where we actually need to take some action and start to be concerned about what the impact could be. So unhealthy for sensitive groups means for individuals who happen to have some other kind of pre-existing health issue or concern, such as you, you have asthma or you have some type of cardiovascular disease or perhaps you're elderly or you're having some kind of other ailment, you actually need to take some precautions because you're at risk for having more uh, serious symptoms or more serious impacts. That's kind of a for the sensitive groups. Uh, at that next higher level or unhealthy, that same concern, but it applies to everyone, even healthy folks. So our uh, agency has a website and we have forecast information, current conditions and discussions of what's gonna happen right there on our main page. Like many other uh, weather issues, we need to think about this beforehand and figure out what you actually need. There's a whole range of needs out there. Some folks who may have asthma or other um, breathing conditions need to talk to their doctor and be prepared. Do you need to have some medication with you? Do you need to have more inhalers or something like that? Be prepared. If you, uh, you know, want to be active and stay in your house, you need to think about what, what you might want to do in your house. Because oftentimes the best thing to do is just stay indoors and let the, smoke come, you know, let the smoke pass by. There are a couple of things you can do in your house to actually help. Uh, one of them is a filter fan, a really basic filter fan. There's actually some videos online and on our website that you can show you how to make one yourself. And also be aware of other options. If you have to be outside and need to be doing something, sometimes a respirator mask can actually work for you. But those need to fit well, and you need to make sure you're comfortable with wearing them for a long period of time. Like Phil had mentioned, if you plan to be outside, it might be beneficial to use a respirator mask. We recommend that it be an N95 rated respirator mask or better. It is important to note that these types of masks need to be properly fitted to the user's face to work correctly. A poor fit or even facial hair can make the mask function improperly. Something like a dusk or surgical mask will not do the job and can often be more problematic than using an N95 rated respirator. It's common in the Pacific Northwest for homes to come without air conditioning, and this could be problematic in the summer with rising temperatures. So something like a air purifier or do-it-yourself box fan filter 
uh, could help uh, remedy this and something that you could keep inside your home uh, to deal with wildfire smoke. Uh, there's do-it-yourself solutions for that box fan filter online. You could just Google it. Uh, but we would caution that they could pose a fire hazard risk. So we recommend to research and, and monitor that if you do decide to build your own. Malls and libraries are also a great alternative solution to stay out of the heat and the smoke during the summer. We would even recommend investing in an air condition that would purify the air or an air, air filter for your home. Uh, as many experts believe that this could be our new normal during the summer. So that would just help deal with wildfire smoke for years to come. Uh, we appreciate you tuning into this video and we hope to catch you next time for our next preparedness video. Thank you.